for this morning. I just wanted to share a psalm that I actually just came across on Wednesday. Um, and for me, it just it gave me great hope um, as I think about my family and, and share with you just um, the Lord's faithfulness among the generations. Um, so I'll, I'll just read this out. It is a, it's a, a long psalm, but just bear with me while I read this out and then we'll, we'll just pray and then begin to worship together. So it's Psalm 107. And it says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. For he has gathered the exiles from many lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in the wilderness, lost and homeless, hungry and thirsty, they nearly died. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he rescued them from their distress. He led them straight to safety, to a city where they could live. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. For he satisfies the, hung, the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and deepest gloom, imprisoned in iron chains of misery. They rebelled against the words of God, scorning the counsel of the Most High. That is why he broke them with hard labor. They fell and no one was there to help them. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them. From their distress. He led them from the darkness and deepest gloom. He snapped their chains. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. For he broke down their prison gates of bronze. He cut apart their bars of iron. Some were fools and they rebelled and suffered for their sins. They couldn't stand the thought of food and they were knocking on death's door. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their, their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and sing joyfully about his glorious acts. Some went off to sea in ships, plying their tr the trade routes of the world. They too observed the Lord's power in action, his impressive works on the deepest seas. He spoke and the winds rose, stirring up the waves. Their ships were tossed to the heavens and plunged again to the depths, and sailors cringed in terror. They reeled and staggered like drunkards, and they were, were at their wit's end. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He calmed the storm to a whisper and stilled the, sea, the waves. What a blessing was that stillness as he brought them safely into harbor. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he's done for them. Let them exalt him publicly before the congregation and before the leaders of the nation. He changes rivers into deserts and springs of water into dry, thirsty land. He turns the fruitful land into salty wastelands because of the wickedness of those who live there. But he also turns deserts into pools of water, the dry land into springs of water. He brings the hungry to settle there and to build their cities. They sow their fields, plant their vineyards, and harvest their bumper crops. How he blesses them. They raise large families there and their herds of livestock increase. When they decrease in number and become impoverished through oppression, trouble and sorrow, the Lord pours contempt on their princes, causing them to wander in trackless wasteland. But he rescues the poor from trouble and increases their families like flocks of sheep. The godly will see these things and be glad while the wicked are struck silent. Those who are wise will take all this to heart and they will see in our history the faithful love of the Lord. I just was so touched by this psalm and impressed by the, um, the, the recounting 
of how the Lord has been so faithful over generations and the, the charge to us as believers to speak out because the Lord's redeemed us. And, you know, the, the Bible reminds us that the, um, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Um, you know, whatever we testify to, whatever we declare that the Lord has done for us and been faithful to us, it has a prophetic impact in the spiritual realm and it causes um, the potential there for it to be repeated and repeated and repeated because it just glorifies, it glorifies God. And so let's just pray this through together before we worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this morning, Lord. That reminds us of your faithfulness among the generations. Um, all these generations, Lord, from right back, from Abraham onwards, all the way, Lord God, you've been faithful through all generations. Um, Lord, you have, you've brought back the, um, the exiles. You've brought back those who wandered. You've brought back those who were complacent and didn't care about you. They, they just went off and wandered and did their own thing. You've brought back those who rebelled against your word, who actively had contempt for you and walked away. And you orchestrated their lives so that they would they would find themselves in a position where they needed to to cry out in their distress not that you um you intently um bring calamity and difficulty but you will use every situation in our lives where we reap a harvest through our own disobedience or wickedness and sin where, where we reap that harvest you come in with um like a hero you just come in and you you answer the prayer of those that are in trouble lord and those that are in distress and so lord as we think about our families we know that you are faithful to them because we're praying and we're sowing seeds in this generation and we know that that's going to reap a harvest because you are faithful so we lift before you all of our families lord god and we know lord that Many of them are going through troubled times. Many of them may have wandered from you. They may have rebelled actively against you. They may have other priorities than you. But you are going to be there for them as they call. You're going to be there for them in their time of trouble, where life takes a downturn, where they find themselves with nowhere else to go. They're going to call out to you and you are going to hear them and you are going to sweep in and rescue them. You are going to set them free. You're going to bring deliverance. You are going to bring restoration. You are going to send your word and heal them. That's what your word said. You sent forth your word and you healed them. Lord God, that's what we pray this morning as we think about our families and we lift them to you. Lord, wherever they are and whatever they're doing, we know that you are the God of restoration. You are the one that brings back the prodigals and you are the one that sets the captives free. And for those that are walking with you today, Lord God, we thank you for your faithfulness to keep them in your word and keep them in your ways. And we just plead the blood of Jesus over them. And we just thank you, Lord, for your power and authority. And Lord, we thank you that and rejoice for those that have heard your word that it's fallen on good so soil and it's already reaping a harvest. Long may it continue from generation to generation, our God, that they will glorify you um, and that there would never be, like I think Pastor Julia mentioned in one of our messages this week, there would never be a shortage of worshippers in the house of God. There would never be a lack of those that would be proclaiming your name, that there would be always this throughput from this heritage of generations of believers that go through, Lord God, that will always yield harvest and that will always bring worshippers to your house and those who will proclaim your name among the nations wherever we are. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. And this morning, Lord, we want to worship you. We want to lift your name up high. 
we want to declare what you have done. We want to testify to your goodness in our lives this morning. We want to um, speak out because you've, you've redeemed us. And we want to tell of your wonderful works and your wonderful love. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all your goodness and your kindness to us. And as we, we kneel at this altar this morning, Lord, we want to raise up an anthem of praise to you this morning. We might be a small number, but we can we can shout and we can praise and we can worship and it can rise like a mighty army before you, Lord, glorifying you, worshipping you and magnifying your holy name. So, Lord, we want to minister to you this morning for all that you've done for us. And we want you to take the glory because it's all about you, it's all your work. Thank you, Father, thank you, Lord. <laughs> and let's worship together this morning. Feel free, wherever you are, to raise your prayers to the Lord of thanks this morning and gratefulness as we worship together. <laughs> The splendor of the king, robed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice. Trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, see how great. How great is our God. Age to age he stands. And time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God had three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great. How great is our God, O oh Lord my God. When I in awesome wonder consider all the works I have has made, I see the stars. I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think of God, His Son that's very sent 
him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art, how great thou art, when Christ shall come, with shouts of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Shall I bow with humble adoration and then proclaim, My God, how great thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior, go to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, oh see how great, how great is our God. You are faithful through every generation. You are faithful to keep those we pray for. You are faithful to set the captive free. You are faithful to heal the broken hearted. You deliver those for whom we intercede. Yes, you deliver those for whom we intercede. For you are faithful, for you are faithful, yes, you are faithful, yes, you are faithful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We come to you just as we are this morning. We come to you knowing, Lord, that only you can mold us and shape us into who you want us to be. That we are ministers and saints in the house of the Lord. And you make us fit for purpose. You shave off those rough edges, you smooth them down 
you polish us and you shine us like precious jewels before you, that we would reflect your glory. Lord, as we intercede for those we love, for our families, our friends, Lord, thank you that you intercede with us. You are alongside us at the Father, pleading for us and for those that we lift before you. We come to you, Lord, the only way that we can, honestly and openly. Do a work in us, Lord. Do a great work in us, Lord. Jesus, take me as I am. I can't come no other way. Take me deeper into you. Make my flesh life melt away. Make me like a precious stone. Crystal clear and finally home. Life of Jesus shining through. Giving glory back to you. Jesus, take me as I am. I can come no other way. Take me deeper into you. Make my flesh life melt away. Make me like a precious stone. Crystal clear and finally whole. Life of Jesus shining through. Giving glory back to you. Life of Jesus shining through, giving glory back to you. Bring you glory, glory, we long to bring you glory. Bring you glory, Lord, from our lives. We long to bring you glory. To make your name known. To make your name known. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your for you are faithful, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That Lord, you continuously speak to us. For those who seek you, you will never turn your face away from them. And we thank you, Lord. That Lord, as we come before you here, Lord, 
Lord, we know your presence are with us. Lord, may you use me, Lord, to share what you have revealed. Use my mouthpiece to share what you have revealed to me over the last two days. And the conviction that you put in my heart. Help me to speak boldly. Um, and speak. Pray. Um, let my words be precise and sharp. Like your word, like a two-edged sword. Lord, Lord, um, yeah, help me to speak the words that you want me to say, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Though uh, the last few, the last two days, when it's, this is the, what the Lord has put in my heart, um, it's uh, not something very nice that the Lord has revealed to me about myself. So I didn't come online on Wednesday. I joined, no, I, I did come online on Wednesday. So this is my um, my conviction, um, my personal conviction. may not apply to everybody, but it's between you and the Lord. And the Lord um, revealed what, is not, what he found not pleasing in me. So this is a personal conviction. And on Wednesday, I was online. I didn't turn on my video because I was half asleep. I must say, I was just logging in because I thought I woke up for, the, you know, about the time as usual, once you wake up often enough, around about the same time as the dawn altar starts, you wake up and I'll say, oh, today I'm not on duty. So I'll just listen online, you know, just don't turn on the video, stay mute. And as usual, when you are on the bed, you know, you try to worship the Lord while lying on bed, it doesn't work because the focus isn't there. The Lord revealed to me, he says, he isn't pleased because it's a half-hearted. You know, I, I do it half-hearted. I come before the dawn altar half-hearted. You know, I did not give him the, the full focus. I did not give to the Lord the adoration. I did not give him, you know, the, the, uh, I did not magnify his name. I did not worship him with all my heart. It was half asleep. And this is what the Lord revealed to me. And he says, he, 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 I mean, we know that the altar is a place of worship. The altar is a place of communion with God. And, um, you know, um, and our most powerful altar is the heart. When, you're half, when I'm half asleep, I'm not communicating. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, focusing on God. I'm like in and out, those off. And, and, you know, we know that, you know, when we come before at the altar, that's where spiritual transactions happen. And, you know, um, we are talking about, you know, battle with the, spir the spiritual realm, the good and the evil. And when I'm half asleep, I can't, I, I can't do that. You know, I, I, I'm drifting in and out. It's, it's definitely like being vulnerable. And so the Lord shows that, you know, um, he's not pleased. Because coming to the altar, the altar is not a sleeping, it's not my bedroom. The altar is not my sleeping time. Coming before him in the altar is my time with him. And he is jealous that I am sharing my time, you know, not fully with him, but half asleep. And therefore, he says, okay, you know, and, and, and Lucy was sharing um, about, um, you know, do not throw... Uh, do not give uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 6 don't give to dogs what is sacred and do not throw your pearls to pigs um, you know if you do they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you into pieces so but what the Lord revealed to me you know we want to ask him something we want to ask him something you know as intercessor as we want to stand in the gap of family and he says he asked he questioned me did this you know do I come before him with sincerity do I you know come before to his feet focusing on him you know how can he give me what i desired he won't throw he knows what we need he knows what we desire but he do not give it to us because we do not know how to hold it it's just like giving pearls to the pigs we're not ready he's not going to give you want to see transformation in my family i want to see breakthrough in my family i need to come before him i need to give him that focus and as we talk as i'm talking now the Muslims are rising up. It's, a, it's the Ramadan, the fasting month. And, you know, the Lord remind me, 
They, they don't know who is the true God, but yet they faithfully wake up at a mass fasting month, the whole month, sunrise to sunset. They fast from water, they fast from food, and they do diligently the hours. They pray five times a day, and they are raising up an altar. And what am I doing? The Lord reveals it. Why am I sleeping at the time that I am supposed to be awake? Who is standing at the gap for my family? Who is standing at the gap, you know, for my community for my church and I am being tasked to do it at this hour do it you know don't sleep don't lie on the bed and you know so that's uh and 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 he says you know ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be open to you how am I asking I'm asking when I'm lying down you know mostly dozing off you know I I I when someone asks you for something, even at workplace, they ask, um, they come over to your desk, they ask you, and then you know, there's conversation. And you know, and 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 if we go find, you know, we lose it, we go find but the Lord says we find him, we go before him, we find him, he will answer to us. You know, we knock at his door, we request, we you know, petition, he will answer. But I I wasn't doing it, I was lying in bed. In my pajamas, half asleep, half listening and half asleep. And that's what the Lord convicted to me. That I cannot serve two gods. Either you want to sleep, you go to sleep. Don't come to don't meet me at the altar. If you come before me at the altar, you come, you know, giving me that full concentration, the attention, because God deserves it all. So and that was that um conviction that He has given to me. And indeed, in Matthew chapter 5, verse, uh, verse 3, you know, it says, Blessed are the, are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If we hunger for the Lord, you know, we desire Him, the Lord will reveal, you know, the secrets of the heavenly to us. If we come before, we're, we're hungry for Him. He is at willing. He is ever ready to shower us, you know, with the knowledge of Him. He wants to show us, you know, um, and he's really he's he's eager to bless his children. But are we are we hungry enough? Am I hungry enough? He's asking me, am I hungry enough for the Lord? If you want, you know, um, am I desperate enough for him? Am I desperate enough for to to desire that breakthrough in my life, in my family, in my family members that I am willing to sacrifice, you know, to come up, wake up, get dressed, sit in front of the the, the the laptop, you know, and, and and be here. Be here for be here with him. And and that was um you know and 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 you know we also talk about um Ezekiel. The Lord revealed to me Ezekiel if I Ezekiel twenty twenty two. Ezekiel 22, 29 to 31. It's a very harsh message. The people of the land practice extortion and commit robbery. They oppress the poor and needy and mistreat the foreigner, denying them justice. And I look for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it. But I found no one. So I will pour out my wrath on them and consume them with my fiery anger, bringing down on their own heads all they have done, declares the foreign, the sovereign Lord. So, you know, he told me, he, he tells me, you know, we, we are, I, I am someone, I, that someone who will be stand, he has appointed me to stand in the gap. And this is the hour, this is the time, the day that he dis he designated. And what am I doing? And he says, because, you know, it's it's because if he had to find there is none who stand in the gap, the sin of our nation, the sin of our family members, because there is no one to stand in the sea, he will pour his wrath on them. And that convicts my heart. And, and that, you know, it, it breaks my heart. So I'm, this is my story that I'm sharing with you that the Lord, you know, that shares, uh, the Lord should reveal to me. Um, may not apply to everybody, but take it 
you know, just what you hear, I sincerely ask that you just ask the Lord to search your heart for, you know, to reveal. And we come before um, the Lord, This our theme for this week and the next week probably, is for our family, to stand in the gap for our family. And one person who does it is um, Job, Job chapter 1, verse 5, you know, his children um, has party and he will wake up you know, early in the morning. He will, does, he will do burn sacrifice, uh, burn offering for each of them because he, he says, perhaps my children may have sinned and cursed God in their heart. So that is his regular, you know, re, uh, regular custom to do so. And the Lord reminds me, you know, um, yes, our children need to have a personal relationship with him, but we as family, as as the as a parent, you know, have a be like Job, intercede for a fam for our children, our family members. And you know, he in the old testament he comes with burnt offering, but for us, we come before the Lord. Our sacrifices is not burnt offering, it's our time just sitting before the Lord and their interaction with Him because of what we do in the morning now, right now at the altar, you know, seated up, giving God the focus that He desires. We are pushing back um, forces of darkness that is oppressing our family. We are the one that stand in the gap and we are the one that see what the Lord is doing, what the Lord, the Lord is giving us stretch, stretch, strategy but if we are not doing this, if we are doing this half-heartedly, if I am doing this half-heartedly, how can the Lord reveal? How can the Lord help me fight my battles when I am not committed to fight, to be part of it? Because in a lot of things the Lord says, be firm, stand firm. I am not standing firm. He's not going to do it because, you know, if I desire Him in that battle, He will do it. But I have to be there to stand firm, just as now I am here. I have to be here. So Lord, thank you, Lord, for this revelation that you have given to me. This may be a word for someone who's listening, even here on the platform right now or even later in the recording, as they listen to the recording. It's a very strong warning to me. And Lord, I really come before you in repentance. That Lord, for I have not done what I should. You have a sign for me to stand in the gap. From you know, for to stand in the gap for my family, for my church, for my you know, for our community, for our nation. But Lord, I have slack. I have not taken this position this responsibility seriously. I thank you, Lord, for that revelation that convicts my heart. The seriousness of it, Lord, or not the consequences of not taking my responsibility as an intercessor. Lord, forgive us, forgive me. Lord, help me help others whom you have called to stand in the gap. You know, for to pray for a certain group of people. Help us, Lord, to not waver. Help us not to be not sitting on the fence, but Lord, to choose you, to choose you over the world to be a radical believer of Jesus Christ, a radical follower of Jesus Christ. Lord, I want to declare that, Lord, our alliance is only with you. Our covenant is only with you. You and only, our only true and living God. We will not make any covenant with other gods. And Lord, when the times that we have failed to stand, you know, to speak against something that we ought to, 
to stand against something that we ought to fight for something or to even stand on behalf of someone else times that we have failed to do it because of our personal weaknesses oh lord forgive us lord help us lord lean help me to lean and trust in you lord my flesh is weak but lord i desire i desire lord to follow you wholeheartedly i desire lord to commit myself to you I don't know how to do it. My flesh is weak, but Lord, may you enable me. May you strengthen me. Lord, I want to take my role, my position here in the, at, the, at the dawn altar seriously. Lord, no longer will I, no longer will I choose to, to just, you know, be darling in half-heartedly. Either I'm all for you, on fire for you. Lord, I want to be all on fire. I do not want to be half-hearted, lukewarm. Because your words say, if I'm lukewarm, you will spit me out from, you will spit me out from the mouth. Lord, I desire to be hot on fire for you, Lord. Give me, Lord. Give me, Lord, that there is desire, that hunger for, for you. That the hunger that can only be filled, Lord. In, you know, by being in your presence, by that fellowship with you, by reading your word, by sitting at your feet, at the at your presence, by just being with you, Lord, help me to have that strong uh, desire for you, Lord. And Lord, grow me areas that need continue that needs to be uh, pruned. Lord, prune me. It hurts, Lord, I know. And I don't like it. But Lord, I'm willing to be pruned. Oh Lord, I know I have to be. I have to be. I have to set myself right before you, before I can. Before I, so that I can be a, a, a living testimony for you, a witness in my family, that my children, my extended family, my siblings, you know, they can see that God indeed, you know, that, that, that God indeed lives in me. And I am radiating Christ to others. That they can see that I live a righteous life. I do not have a double life, double standard. But Lord, but I live, they see, they can see that I live a righteous life. Help me, Lord, to be that salt and light wherever you send me. And Lord, it's only through that that we can impact our family. It's only through that, Lord, when we are ready, when we are strengthened and we come. Only when we are strengthened, then we can have that, that you know, we, with the armor of God, we can stand and intercede for our family. We can't do it for our own. On our own, we need you, Lord. And I need you. I need you. So come, cleanse my heart. Reveal what that is not right in my heart. And Lord, you, we know that, Lord, you are cleansing the priesthood because it is us, the priesthood is the one that leads the people to you. And the priesthood has to be sorted out and come before you clean. So Lord, pray in me, pray in us. The clean heart and clean hands. The pure heart and clean hands, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this conviction. And Lord, just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Alice, that is so, such a, a wonderful reminder of what we, what position we have in the house of the Lord. And that really convicted my heart too. Thank you so much for being so vulnerable to share that. Um, and it just confirms 
actually what the Lord's been speaking to me too. And it reminded me about, um, was also when I was considering what to share this morning, um, it's kind of like between two scriptures. And um, the other thing that's really been on my heart is that conviction to just be so committed to being in the presence of the Lord all the time and meditating in his temple on his goodness and being in his house wherever that is at this altar like right now or um, whenever we meet with other believers um is psalm 27 and i just i just felt this to share now in light of what you've just said um psalm 27 and verse um four says the one thing i ask of the lord the thing I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple, for he will conceal me there when trouble comes. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as you were as you were praying and sharing what the Lord convicted you, I was thinking about this, because in His grace and His mercy, as we recognise um, when He convicts us and when He prunes us, and when we know that we need to be so dedicated and so um, committed to the position to intercede and stand in the gap for our family. There's nothing more important than, than that. And the grace of God and the love that he has for us, he showers his blessing and his, his, he pours out his spirit to equip and enable us to do that when it's our heart's intent and to follow him wholeheartedly is our heart's intent. You've just said that. And that's why I just feel this is a fitting way to kind of um, respond to that, that as we have, as we come and as we, we lay ourselves before the Lord and we, we recommit to him what we want, that we want to be wholehearted followers of the Lord, that we want to be intercessors. We want to respond to that call. We want to, um, diligently minister to the lord um he will help us he will enable us like you asked he will equip us he will um provide all that we need to do what we need to do we we're not called into any position without the full resources of heaven to help us um the lord is the is the commander in chief but he's also the the one equipping us to, to do everything that we need to do and so um i i see the intent of our hearts as we meet here um and yes our flesh is sometimes often very very weak but our spirit's willing and the lord is looking at our hearts and he by his blood looks past our failures and sees Jesus. He sees the one who didn't fail in his mission, um, the one who was not um, half-hearted in what he was doing. And I'm reminded too of Jesus in the garden, how he labored with his flesh. And he said to the, to the Lord, his father, he he was vulnerable as he shared his heart and knew what was what lay before him. Um, but his intent was there and the Lord honoured him because he overcame his flesh by, by the, his will. He chose, he learned obedience through suffering, didn't he? And that's what we're doing here. We're learning obedience through suffering. We're, you know, we're sacrificing sleep and time. Um, and many things so that we can come and minister before the Lord and he will honour that in our lives. And so um, I just think this is a, a good way to, to respond.
let's just let's bring our intent back to the Lord this morning if um, like as Alice was speaking, I was repenting and saying to the Lord, you know my heart, you know my intent, Lord. Now let everything about my my flesh come into line with my, my intent. The desire of my heart is you before anything else. I want to be in your presence and to minister to you, um, not just at the altar, but every day. Um, and whenever the Holy Spirit prompts me, is time to come in the to the altar, um, and I'm so grateful for the Lord revealing this to us this morning. Um, and I'm just going to sing a song um, that we can reflect on and pray this through. And this is again, you see how good the Lord is. Like this was one of the songs I wanted to to share. Just wasn't sure where it would fit this morning, and now I see what the Lord has brought to us and laid before us to to contemplate and to to think on and so it's a it's a recommitting and putting our hands our lives back into jesus hands not that we strayed away but just that we you know like when jesus said to i think it was to peter and he said you know those who've been those who've been um cleansed you know you don't need you need, need a bath you just need your feet washing again so we just come and and just bring ourselves before the Lord again and, and recommitting um, our intent to him and saying that's what we seek. We seek to be in his presence. We seek to be at his altar. We seek to do his will and to do his work. Um, like a watchman on the wall, we can't be slumbering. We have to be alert and awake. And we've got each other as well to bolster each other up. You know, watchmen don't work in isolation. They they work as a team. There's a shift pattern. Um, they take the watch of the night and they hand over to the next person and um, they share what they've seen and they share what they're what they're feeling about what they're seeing. You know, this is this is a community and we do this together. We support, we love, we honour each other and we lift each other up. So let's do that as we just reflect on what Alice has shared this morning. To your hands, I commit again all I am for you, Lord. You hold my world in the palm of your hand, and I am yours forever. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live, the reason that I sing with all I am. I walk with you wherever you go, in tears and joy, I'll trust in you. And I will live in all of your ways and your promises forever. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live. The reason that I sing with all I am, I will worship, I will worship you, I will worship, I will worship. One 
thing I am, one thing I see, to dwell in your hands forever more. One thing I ask, one thing I see is to dwell in your house forever. Gazing upon the beauty of you, meditating on your perfection. One thing I ask, one thing I see. To dwell in your house forevermore. You conceal me there, hiding me from trouble, lifting me above my enemy. So one thing I'll see, one thing I'll ask, is to dwell in your house forever. One thing we ask, O oh Lord, one thing we see, is to dwell in your house forever. Thank you, Lord, that you hear the cry of our heart. You see our heart above everything else, Lord. You know our intention. Now, Lord, by your spirit, come and guide and lead us into your ways Lord as we recommit our intention to minister here at this altar for our families for our nations thank you that you won't turn your face away from us as Alice said you have promised Lord to build us up and equip us into the ministers and the saints that we need to be in this generation and this season, you will be faithful. Lord, help, they cried in their distress. And he came and rescued them. Your word says. You lifted them up out of their trouble. You pruned your people. You molded and shaped your people to whatever they needed to be for you to minister in your house. And that's what we ask of you this morning, Lord. Take our lives and let them be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Thank you, Lord. Over to you again, Alex, to close. All right, thank you, Sister Jill. Um, Pastor Julia, you have um something to share. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our time is gone, it's six o'clock, but we have nothing else to add or to remove <clears throat> from that. It's horribly pure the conviction of the Holy Spirit at this time and hour of our lives where God is calling for total commitment, wholeheartedness devotion, availability, commitment, love of God, long-suffering, and on and on and on and on. It is that time that God is calling for such as those who will carry the cross 
and study the gap and be one-sided, be one-sided, decided, be, de be your decision, be firm. The Lord is looking for those in this time on the air. And I want to tell you and encourage you. I'm not surprised by what the Lord is speaking to Alice because that has been our commitment. And I remember um, ever since now, I don't know, three or four years, I don't even, I, we've lost tr track of time. But the minute we stood out and the, the Lord convicted that we needed to stand out and wake up in the morning and pray together. And I remember calling Alice and talking together. And that morning was the two of us. And that is how we began many years way back. And here we are. It takes commitment, wholeheartedness. And from then, unless there was anything that could make us miss in any of those meetings, anything so genuine, the Lord has seen faithfulness and has continued to make us grow. But even us, we are wanting, we are needy. We need to be pruned because all those things come up along the way and they distract us and we tend to lose the track. But if we remain committed wholeheartedly, people of God, there is no pretense before the Lord. It's either you are there or you are not there. It's either you know what you are doing or you don't know what you are doing. It's either you are for God or you are not for God. There is no in between. There is no middle ground. There's no crossroads. It's either one way or the other. The reason I'm also convicting us on this is because lately I will only take one or two minutes. Um, still at the dawn altar, so many of us, like when we come here in the morning, uh, if you are ministering and I'm ministering, I've several had people talk to me and say, that, oh my God, I was just talking to myself. It's just because maybe you are the only one on video. Everyone else, sometimes it's an assumption. I don't know that everyone else is sleeping or whatever you are doing, but you you are like, you are talking to yourself. I don't think that is why I appear here every morning. For me, I appear on video because I choose to do that. And I told the Lord, I'll never pretend before you. I'm either there or I'm not. But circumstances are different for all of us. So it's also an exhortation from my part that many of us who minister here would desire, if we are all ministering in the morning, just be on your video. If it's the two of you, be on your video throughout that session because the other person is relying on you for strength and edification. So if you are ministering three of you, the three of you remain on the video throughout that one hour. You are the strength of the other because I have heard this every day, all the time I hear that. And when you are alone and you are ministering to nobody, you are ministering to the air, I'm telling you it's different from when you are ministering to one face that you can see. When you see a face, now you know you are talking to that face because you don't know about anyone else. Maybe you are talking to the air, which is okay, we do that still, but it's as per the conviction of Alice, I'm also now putting my input of what I've gathered from all of us. I've gathered that from all of us. So if you are on the ministry on any particular day, just set yourself up, remain on the altar from beginning to the end, fully dressed, fully sitting up with video. Even if it's two of you, that's okay. If it's one of us, that's okay. Because even me and Alice, sometimes we may fall out because of one reason or the other and you may find there's no video. So that is coming from, this were reactions from all of us. And God bless you, Aris, for that boldness, for sharing that, that courage, that boldness, that's the house of the Lord, that's the conviction of the Lord, that's what the Lord wants. The Lord wants to shape his church so that the church is either there or not there. But God doesn't want that middle ground. Amen? Actually, the reason I've come here is also to um, edify ourselves on Friday evening. Friday evenings or Fridays, Friday evenings is what the Lord has convicted us lately. And we have stepped out that in the city, physically, this is Zoom, where we come and we can see each other on Zoom. But people of God, this will never take the position of physically, literally, physically, going to the prayer loop and hold hands. And I see you. And we walk together. We cry together. We sing together. We worship together. This is Zoom. This is good. We'll never take the place of physical presentation. So people of God, together with all the other meetings that we do, the Lord has convicted us that in the prayer room, in the altar room, in the city, in Adelaide, in the heart of the city where we meet, every Friday we've been meeting there. And the Lord has given us this initiative that before the city gets active with all the activity of the night in a city, 
Then the voices of the faithful people would have gone ahead of them and released worship and released intercessions and, re- and covered them with the goodness of the Lord before they come out, before the city is blossoming with all kinds of things. As you know, on a Friday evening, there were two women, there were three women, there was one child, there was one woman, one man who stood in the gap at five o'clock before the city gets busy. And then they cried before the Lord and they worshiped the Lord before every other voice has come out. And so that is the conviction, is the mission we are on. People of God faithfully, we have stood out. I remember we have had either two people coming in, either three, either four, either one child, either what not, or one person. We are faithful in this. If you ever get a chance, come out. If not, just pray for us. I am also seeking and asking for leadership in that area. Thank God for Alice who stood in the gap for this door altar. I have never had to carry the burden of this altar. And you know that Alice has carried it with her own shoulders. And so Julia can go and now open up another field altogether. Now we are in the city. Five o'clock to seven o'clock, two hours. We are crying before the Lord for our city. Telling the Lord we are here. The faithfuls are here. The voices of the faithfuls are here. If you are one of them, I am also calling out for leadership because myself, I can also miss out for any reason. Number one, because of work. Number two, because of family. Number three, because of any reason. But our prayer is that there will be someone in the altar, five o'clock to seven o'clock, crying out to the Lord, interceding. But people of God, Julia is committed. I'll be there. It's my commitment and I'm asking the Lord to help me. So that when then we start that way, another one will come in. And I'm looking forward, it's prophetic. For a day we shall have five women, faithfuls, ten faithfuls, 20 faithfuls physically interceding in our city. I'm looking for that thing that we shall have 20 people physically, physically crying for our city. We people, we've been called into this city and to the cities of these nations, of the world, but we are calling for physical people of God crying together for our families, for our cities in the name of Jesus. So people of God, remember Friday evening, if you have a conviction of intercession and standing in the gap, as Alice convicted us, if God has called you, it's wholehearted and God will pay you. God will reward you. The Bible says in Hebrews that God diligently repays those who, those who seek him diligently. He rewards those who diligently seek him. There are all the rewards, people of God. It's not in vain. And even if it was in vain, it's better in vain in the court of the Lord than in vain in the world. It's better before the Lord. It, if it was in vain, it can never be in vain. And so pray for us for Friday evenings. It is now like tonight, Friday evening, five to seven. There could be someone through the day, but five to seven committed to now open that field and believe God to help us to study the gap and to cry out for our people, for our city before activity takes place. I want to tell you two voices will have cried to the Lord. That's what our commitment is right now. And that is the area that the Lord has helped us, convicted us and strengthened us and released us now to go onto that journey. People of God, God bless you. The Lord is working with us. He is leading us much more than before. We are thankful and that takes you and that takes me. God is looking at us and he's pleased with you. People of God, don't even adore it. Or that you are one v- person that God values and he uses you. He's pleased with you. Even when we are struggling with being half asleep and waking up, God is still pleased with you. He sees a vessel that can be perfected to become a vessel before the heads of the Lord and that will fulfill the destiny of a nation, of a family, of a life. God is looking at you. You are valuable. You and I can do it. God is investing, has invested a lot. God bless you and apologies for those minutes. Now, Alice, we can conclude. I believe I can just conclude. We shall see you on Monday morning on this altar. We shall see you on Saturday morning at the prayer altar. People of God, God is filling our lives with him. It's what Jill read for us, Psalm 27, and that I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. That is exactly what we are talking about. I don't know. Let's see how, how this space goes. But if it means we spend life, our life in the house of the Lord, we spend our life there. At the same time, we are still working full-time people of God. I can guarantee you full-time workers and doing everything else. But God is uh, God is, is gracious. He owns the time. He can multiply your time, increase your time. Your time make it potential that you never lose a minute, but you gain in multiplication in what you do, potential upon potential upon potential. God bless you. Let us go now. We finish with the grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. 
and now surely your goodness and your love shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you and have a very good day. we we'll see you again when we see you. Bye for now.